Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we prune and also try to propagate my Montauk daisy. So let's go. Have you ever heard of Montauk daisy? I hadn't as of a few years ago. And then I was at a garden center and I saw some really pretty white daisy flowers in the fall time. And that intrigued me because I was not used to seeing white daisies in the fall. I'm so used to seeing mums and lots of mums. So I wanted to know more about what that plant was. And of course I brought one home with me. I love having this plant in my yard for a number of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is it provides that nice late season interest that my garden lacks in the late summer into the fall months. The name Montauk comes from the fact that this plant has naturalized along Montauk, Long Island. And if you go down to that area, you will see it everywhere down there. And another name for a Montauk daisy is Nippon daisy. And Nippon comes from the fact that you'll find it along the coastlines of Japan. The Montauk daisy has a very, very pretty white flower. And again, you'll find it blooming in the late summer into the early fall. And it has a nice glossy leaf to it and often it becomes a nice, almost like a shrubby or bushy type of plant. And when it comes to where to place it in a flower bed or a garden bed, I would suggest that you try to plant it somewhere towards the center of your bed, since it does get to be a little bit on the taller side. And also it'll cover some of the bottom leaves, which often will fall off during the season. And who doesn't love a plant that attracts all the pollinators? And what I also love about it is that, even though it does have a little bit of a stinky or a pungent odor, that helps because the deer as well as the rabbits really don't care for this plant. Some people like to grow it because you can cut it and use it as a cut flower. What I also like about it is that it's drought tolerant, which is always nice because anything that requires a lot of care, a lot of watering, sometimes can be too much to manage. So it is a drought tolerant plant. It's also salt tolerant. So if you live on the coastline or near some water, this plant does very well in those locations also. The daisy likes full sun, so make sure if you're gonna get this plant that you place it somewhere that gets full sun, and also it does not like to be wet. It doesn't like its roots to be wet, otherwise the roots can rot. So make sure you put it in a place where it's gonna have free or well-draining soil. One thing that I learned last year was that it was important to keep it deadheaded when, once it did start blooming, because you want the plant to look nice, just like any other plant. So make sure you keep up with deadheading this plant just so that it looks its very best. The daisy can get a woody stem to it. And also it is known to be sometimes top heavy and it can flop over, get very leggy. So in order to prevent that, you wanna cut this plant back a couple of times during the season. The first time would be in the late spring to early summer. And also you can cut it one more time in the midsummer, sometime like around June or so. It's the middle of April and I figured it's a great time for me to go ahead and cut the plant back. And when it comes to how far to cut it back, it really is a personal preference. The key is you want to cut it back enough so that it has a nice, forming, tidy habit to it. Uh, what I'm planning to do today is to cut it back to about 6 to 12 inches from the ground. So I want it to be tall enough but not too tall. And when it comes to the cuttings, you can do one of two things. You can take all those cuttings and you can just put them in your compost pile and just get rid of them that way. But what I wanna to try to do today, and it's something that I've never done before, but I've read and heard that it's very easy to do, is I wanna to try to propagate my daisy using the cuttings. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can take the cuttings and place them in a glass or a jar of water, or you can take the cuttings and place them right into the soil and then the final way you can do it is you can take the cuttings and you can put them in pots that have potting mix in them. Now that's just one way to propagate the Montauk daisy. Another way is to propagate it from seed. And then a final way is to propagate it through division, taking, digging the plant up or parts of the plant up and dividing the roots that way. But for right now, I just wanna focus on giving my Montauk daisy a nice clean cut. I want it to, I wanna control its shape and its form and I wanna take those cuttings and I wanna propagate them in water. And I figured I'd take you in along with me so we can do this together. And then in a future video, I'll, I'll do a follow-up and I'll show you how we did. If we got the cuttings to root and then what the next steps are. 
So before we begin, I wanted to tell you the things that I've collected. I have a vase here and it just has regular tap water. Now my tap water does not have any chlorine in it. And if you do use water, you wanna make sure that it doesn't have any chlorine in it. I have something to cut with. The biggest thing is make sure whatever you're gonna cut with is properly sterilized. And I've already sterilized these. I just took a cotton ball and I put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it and I cleaned off all the sides of my blades on the cutting instrument. And then you wanna make sure you wear gloves because the plant has uh, some oils or sap on it. It might be irritating to your skin. So make sure that you're wearing gloves as well. So let's head towards the west side of my house and I will show you the next steps for cutting the Montauk daisy so we can get them rooting. In my front yard, which is the west side of my house, I have three Montauk daisy. And you can see here, that they are very spindly. There's one piece that's kind of coming off to the side here. There's a big piece coming off towards the front. And then there's a couple of taller pieces in the center here. Now, again, I could easily just cut this back and then just you know discard or throw away all the pieces that I'm cutting. But I do wanna to try to root these cuttings. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut these back and again, from what I've read, I've read a number of things. I have read that you can cut it to the ground. I have read that you wanna cut it to about six inches from the ground, and sometimes even up to 12 inches from the ground. Now, these plants are still pretty small. They're not very big. If it was a much taller plant, then maybe I'd be keeping it 12 inches from the ground. But they, this, like from the ground to here, I would say is about maybe seven or eight inches. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think this is a good height right here. And again, I plan on coming in probably in June to cut this back even more. So for today's purposes, I'm gonna be happy just cutting it back enough so that it gives me enough to work with and it tidies up things. So this is a nice lar large piece that we're gonna work with here. And it really comes down to personal preference and how tall do you want to keep your daisy. And I'm looking at this piece here. Again, it starts not looking so good at a certain point. So you just wanna make sure you're cleaning it up enough. So I cut it back pretty hard, you can see. But I'm pleased with how it looks. So we have enough here from this one plant, we're gonna to go to another plant that's nearby and we're gonna take cuttings from that one. This one here is still pretty small. It's probably one that I divided last year. And again, I feel comfortable cutting it right here. Just to clean things up. All right, we have a ton of cuttings here to play with. So let's go back and see what we can do. So we got quite a few cuttings actually. And again, this will be good just to see what happens. You know, again, my research has shown that um, it's pretty easy to propagate Montauk Daisy from cuttings and I wanna try it. I wanna see if, it's, if that's true. So with this first piece here, I'm looking, you know, a lot of times you can look carefully at it and you can see the parts that are really dead and then the parts that have a little bit of green growth on them. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna cut off the very top tips if they look dead, if there's not a lot of green growth. Like this part right here, I can tell that there's not a lot happening with it, so we might as well remove it. And I'm just gonna pull off any um, leaves that are, were from last year. And with any cutting, you always want to make sure that the mother plant is good and healthy. 
And I'm just looking at the size of the cutting compared to this vase. I want to make sure that it will fit in there no problem, which it looks like it's a good size. When it comes to the size of your cutting, you really can take it almost as small as you want. If you want to do small little three or four inch cuttings, you can do that. And again, you can place these in some potting mix in a pot. Uh, I wouldn't suggest your, any of these cuttings go in full sun. You'd want them to be somewhere where it's shady. And when it comes to propagating in water, anytime you propagate plants in water, just make sure that you change your water out every one to two days. You don't want the um, plant or the stems to rot. And also, anytime you propagate plants in water, you want to make sure that there are no leaves inside the water level there. So you want to remove any bottom leaves. So I can just go ahead and pull those off. They come off pretty easily. You could cut them off also if you want to. And that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that in the water. And what I'll probably do because I, I'm sure I'll have some smaller cuttings here, I will most likely also take some of these and put them in a pot with some pre-moistened potting mix. And I'll keep them here on the porch where it doesn't get any sun. And I'm going to see if I can try to root some of these um, in potting mix as well. That'll be just, I'm always trying to experiment, so that would be a good experiment. And the same rules will apply if I'm going to do that in potting mix, and I want to make sure I remove any bottom leaves when it comes to nodes, it's always good to have at least a few leaf nodes in the water as well as um, in the potting mix. And a leaf node is basically where a leaf was. And then you also on the top want to make sure that you have uh, two, maybe three sets of leaves at the top. That's important as well. On this piece here, again, this section doesn't look like it's really alive. You can see there's greenery here. There's some greenery there. And I'm looking at this cutting next to the vase, and I feel really bad. I could remove all these leaves, and that way this cutting could go in the water. But this is just really a nice um, set of leaves on the top here. So what I'm going to do with this particular cutting is I'm going to cut it right here. And again, these will be good pieces that I can stick in soil and try to propagate that way. Now here is, if you look at how long it is, it's quite a long piece. I'm going to cut this right here. Remove that leaf. And we're going to go ahead and remove these leaves down at the bottom and these leaves here. And now this can get placed in the water. Here's another piece. And again, you can see at the top that it starts to just die off. So we can cut that. And I'm just looking. I can see that there's some green right here. Let's go ahead and remove some of the leaves from the bottom. What typically happens is wherever you're removing the, the leaf nodes or the leaves, a lot of times that's where roots might end up forming. This is a good start, and I think what I'd like to do is just show you what my process would be for sticking these in some potty mix or some soil. It's actually quite simple, but we might as well do some of those together as well. In this pot is pre-moistened potty mix, and I do have some vermiculite mixed in here. This was just used in some other pots and containers that I already had, and the big thing is make sure that this is pre-moistened. You don't want to be putting cuttings in anything that's dry. And when it comes to your cuttings, you want to make sure, again, that you have at least a couple of sets of leaves or leaf nodes at the top. And then make sure that you don't have any leaves down in the bottom. But you also want to make sure that you have one or two areas where you stripped off the leaves. Because, again, that's where the roots are going to form. And then you can just go ahead and stick it in. Some people like to stick cuttings directly out in the landscape, 
but I personally like to stick them in pots like this because I have a little more control over the sun, over the water. Plus, I don't know where in my landscape I want to put these yet. Here's that other nice cutting that I think would be perfect to put in the pot. There's no maximum of how many cuttings you can put in your pot. As many as you can fit. That's the way I feel. And I really hate wasting um, cuttings if they might possibly uh, produce anything. So in this situation, you can see that there are no other leaves on here. There's just this one right here. I'm actually going to just cut the top off. And I'm just going to try to root this little guy. You never know. Worst case, it doesn't root. Here's another nice small piece. Anytime you work with cuttings, you want to make sure you let the cutting do its thing. You don't want to be checking it too soon to see if roots were formed. But let's say that you really want to go, you want to check. At that point, I think it's better to root in something that's clear, like a clear cup, let's say. I'm patient. I'm not going to check anytime soon. I'd rather give this time and let it do its thing. We're going to strip these leaves off here. So I am curious, have you ever heard of the Nippon or Montauk Daisy? And if so, do you own one or do you want to buy one for yourself? And if you've never heard of it, what do you think? Do you think this, this is a plant that could fit in your garden space? Please drop a comment below because I'd be interested to know. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a plant that I had never heard of for the longest time. And I think the fact that it blooms in the um, later in the season when not much else is blooming makes it a plant that really would be great in a lot of gardens. So what I'm planning to do now is I'm going to finish up all of these and um, any of the taller cuttings will go in this vase. And the, of the shorter cuttings, I can still fit in here. Plus, I'll probably use another pot and fill that up. And um, the, the last thing I wanted to share was I won't be um, touching these for probably about six weeks. That's what I read is that it might take up to six weeks for those roots to really form. But what I like about the water method is that I can also watch and see if the roots are forming there. I'll make sure I keep adding some water to my pots without adding too much because I don't want to rot anything. And then I'll plan on changing the water out every one to two days. I'm going to leave these on my porch. I'm going to make sure that they are not getting any direct sunlight on them. And I'll make a future video to show you um, how these turned out, how the cuttings turned out. I hope you enjoyed this content in this video. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.